Something as small as little particles and animations is what Roblox developers use to keep you addicted to their game. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving myself a few coding challenges, and the challenges all have to deal with smooth effects to enhance your games. And maybe you guys can even copy what I make and put it into your games. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a satisfying door opening system where you walk up to the door, but before you actually get to the door, it smoothly opens up for you. And then when you walk through it and then walk away, it closes it for you. And you would usually see this in role playing games, you know, with huge cities and whatnot. So I have this pre-made door model with three or four parts. Three are the frame, one is the main door, but there's also this one big part which is going to detect when we enter the area to open up the door. And to actually break down what is happening here, the primary part of this door model is a hinge. And the hinge is a transparent invisible part right here. And the hinge has a weld constraint and this weld is to the main part of the door so basically what this means is if we rotate the hinge part the main part this part right here will rotate with it so by using tween service we can rotate the hinge part and everything will look really nice so now it's actually time to start coding this so i'm going to insert a local script and we can start by getting some variables All right, so here are our variables to the door. We get the primary part, the hinge, the open part, everything like that. And since we are using tween service, we also need to get a tween info. And you can see it here. And then we're using a debounce. So when we touch the open part, it doesn't fire multiple times. And we're also getting an OG C frame or original C frame for our primary part, which is the hinge. So how this is going to go is there will be two events and I think I'm going to do it like this open dot touched clone connect function and get our hit and then also there is an event called touched ended which will fire when we stop the touch event for open so we know to close the door. All right, so I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to go about actually opening the door. And we are obviously going to be doing this using tween service, as I've already said. So it's just a basic tween. I say tween service create on the primary parts. We're using our tween info. And then how we are doing this is we are setting the C frame of the main door to itself primary part dot C frame and we are also multiplying it by C frame dot angles and in C frame dot angles we are going to multiply it by math dot rad 90 degrees so we're putting 90 degrees in for math dot red sorry math dot rad and then we're going to say zero so we are going to rotate the part on its y axis because you know if we actually visualize this the green is always the y-axis in roblox so you can see we wrote want to rotate it like this and then we're going to call colon play so it plays the tween and then to finish our debounce for this event we're going to say task dot wait two seconds so this only runs every two seconds and then we're going to set debounce back to false and then for our touch ended event it's basically going to be the same thing except we are tweening it to its original C frame. All right, this should be our script done and we can go ahead and test it in game. All right, so we are in game and I made the transparency of our open part a little bit lighter or, you know, so you can see it. So when we touch the part, we see the door opens up, we can walk through it and then when we leave the area, it closes again. All right, so the next effect I'm going to try to make is an orb XP kind of system where like these orbs kind of jump into your character and it's kind of a cool effect. And I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to be able to do it, but you know, I'm sure I'll figure something out. 
So since we're making an orb XP kind of system, we obviously need a orb kind of object. So I have this right here, really basic sphere part. And I also added a trail into it so it looks a little bit better. So I'm going to code this on the client. So once again, another local script and starter player scripts. And hopefully what I can do with this system is clone this part and then search up a like type of complex math system that will generate a like a curved path for me or like some type of curved kind of formation line. I'm not entirely sure how to explain it, but hopefully I can find something like that because I don't think I can just write that off the top of my head. And obviously to start, we need our services, variables and utility variables, all that kind of stuff. All right, so I'm going to add this spacing variable because hopefully what I can do with this is the more parts I use at once for the XP or the orbs, I want the spacing to be different. So the more parts, the smaller the spacing will be. So hopefully I can configure this and use it in the system. But, you know, we'll just gonna have to see how it, everything turns out. All right, so I'm going to do this using tween service, as you can see up here, because I don't know how else I would do it. So we are getting tween info once again. And then what I want to do for this system is use run service to constantly update the position. Or actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think tween service is a good idea. Hold on. All right, so we're no longer going to use tween service. And then what I think I'm going to do is use run service and constantly update the position of our part every frame using render stepped probably. And, you know, we'll go from there. All right, guys, so I think this might seem a little unnecessary, but I think I'm going to use tween service but I'm only going to use tween service for the purpose of determining when our effect is completed. So I'm just going to make a fake tween just for the purpose of calling like tween not completed colon wait until, you know, just wait until the tween is done and then do what we need to do after it. Okay, so this is the curve path function I'm going to use. And I did a little bit of digging to find this. And this should work with the scenario I'm doing. So we're making an X, Y, and Z coordinates and just returning them. All right, so now I need to figure out what I'm doing next. And I'm probably going to have to do a little bit more research online. And we're just going to see what works, what doesn't. So, yeah. I'm really hoping this code works. So we're just going to go with it and we're just going to keep going on with this. All right, so we are going to see with what I just found and put together will actually work. Is it optimized? Probably not. Will it work? Well, we are going to have to see. So it'll go after three seconds, hopefully. And then, oh, yo, that wasn't too bad. Maybe we need to change the spacing a little bit. 
But that actually wasn't too bad. Hold on a second. I actually think the spacing is okay. I think it's the way I position my character. So if we stand right next to it, imagine if there was a drop. Hey, that, that looks good. Yo, this is cool. Oh, man. Maybe we should make it so it repeats a few times. All right, here we go. Hopefully it should play. There we go. All right, and if we move our character over here, it should move. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's get right close up and close to the part. All right, yo, that looks cool. Oh, it works. That's actually really nice. All right, so let's try out with a lot of parts. So where did I, I think we'd have to change this value. And we can try something 25 parts. Now, I think the spacing is kind of bad because it just goes in a straight line. Yeah, it just goes in a straight line, but hey, just having three actually looks really good. Okay, so for the last thing effect I'm going to make for this video is when you have a proximity prompt under an object and you walk up to the proximity prompt, there will be an outline effect on the object when the proximity prompt shows up. And from working with other systems and working just working with proximity prompts in general i'm pretty sure there is a service called something with proximity prompts proximity prompt service and then in here there should be something like with the prompt like shown or something triggered okay yep we have prompt shown and there should also be prompt hidden all right yeah so we're going to use these two events to basically make it so when it's shown, we're going to add a highlight to the object. And when it's hidden, we're going to get rid of the object. So we're going to start off by getting the player service as well. So players, and then we're going to say proximity prompt service dot prompt shown. And then in this, we should get, yeah, the prompt that that is shown so prompt so now using this line we should have found our object to highlight and then from there we can put a new highlight into the object Okay, so I might be wrong on this, but since I set the Adorni of the highlight to our object, that means I could basically put the highlights parent to whatever we want. So I don't know, I was just kind of experimenting with this. We're just going to put it in the player GUI. I don't know why. We're just kind of messing around with it. So now that we have the highlight parented and everything like that, I'm pretty sure we need to make it so when the prompt is hidden using this event prompt hidden we can then delete it but i think what we can do is put it inside of this event to make it easier so i'm going to get the same prompt from this event but say prompt hidden and then connect it to so it only runs once calling once and then a function and then saying highlight destroy just like that so we have basically made a highlight that kind of has a white tint and then i was actually kind of i thought i was smart for thinking of this uh with the prompt hidden thing inside of this event but we're just gonna have to see if it works uh yeah okay i already have this part with the proximity prompt in it so let me head into the game walk up to the part hey there we go yo that looks clean Dang. Oh, I should use this in more of my games. This actually looks really nice. And yeah, guys, this was today's video. If you guys did learn something from this video or you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.